Today, I want to share some good news about where we've come from in this great awakening and also about where we need to go next in our ascension journey. Hi, I'm Saratoga Ocean, and I work together with an interdimensional, interuniversal, and extraterrestrial force known as Telstar, along with Archangel Michael. Now, it's very easy to get discouraged in the world today and feel like we're not going anywhere. In fact, it can even feel like we're going backwards at times. So I think it's time to pause and acknowledge ourselves for the progress we've actually made so that we can stand in our power and go forward from here. Now think back to where we were collectively at the beginning of 2020. We were so naive. We were just like lambs to the slaughter, collectively trusting everything the controllers told us. We were unconsciously riding on assumptions that the world was basically reliable and that we could essentially trust the powers that be to maintain our current environment of living. And if the media told us that something was going on, we basically tended to believe them. Here's one example. If the media told us that we were all horrible racists, we immediately got on our knees and begged for forgiveness. Little did we know that their real plan was to intensify racism and make it worse than ever. Now, before I go on, there's something I need to add about this subject that we really need to consider. Have you noticed how the controllers suddenly and obsessively want to separate and categorize all of humanity according to skin color? This is not about skin color. This is about genetics. Skin color is actually a genetic marker for them. Their real intention and by the way, this actually has an extraterrestrial origin. Their real intention is to separate out certain genetic streams in preparation for shifting humanity into an artificial AI universe. The controllers don't care about racism. They're using racism as their excuse to openly compartmentalize humans according to their various genetic structures. Their larger goal is to manipulate our genetic structures so they can create a new AI breed of human. And they cannot have us all racially mixed together if they're going to do this successfully. See, you have to remember that almost everything these guys tell us is exactly the opposite of what is really going on. So when they tell us that, oh, they're so worried about racism, they don't, they're, not only are they not worried about it, they actually created it from the very beginning. And now the truth is they absolutely want us to be more racist than ever before. This is how they can manipulate us to go along with their plan of genetic segregation and control. See, unfortunately, they kind of see us all as a bunch of lab rats. Now, you might wonder how I might know this. It's because it is routinely done on other planets. The genetic farming of humans is a despicable practice that is the actual origin of racism. They always invoke racism to keep their genetic lines separated so they don't mix together and ruin their experiments. So they have been doing this historically for a very, very long time. I mean, probably throughout our entire history. But now it is something that would be very wise for us to wake up to before they eventually succeed at the physical hurting and culling of any genetic streams that they no longer want. So here's what I think we should do. We should all decide to be as unracist as possible to screw up their plan completely. We should love each other and embrace each other and accept each other for all of our different races. And you know, that's really gonna mess up their plan. So I wanted to bring that up now because they're making such a huge deal about this as though they care about it, but yet they are inciting it more and more and more. So that's how you can kind of tell what they're really up to. Every time we wake up and we become conscious 
to their plans and how they're manipulating us, we become more empowered, more clear, more conscious, and more fully present. And we also end their ability to manipulate us in that particular way. So the more that we do that, the better off we are and the worse off they are. Now let's go back for a moment to the beginning of 2020. Do you remember when we were told that we only needed to lock down for just two weeks? We were also told that masks don't work and that we should not wear them. Two weeks seemed like an awfully long time back then, remember that? But we innocently believed these perpetrators and then we took that first fateful step. We were so incredibly trusting and naive. We just wanted to be good people and do the right thing. Back then, most of us collectively thought that believing the media's lies and doing what they said was how you proved to yourself and others that you are a good person. We have come a long way since those days. And as it stands right now, there are fewer and fewer and fewer people every single day who are still tracking with the media's lies. And it's also important to remember that the media is always going to highlight all of the people that go along with them to make those of us who don't go along with them believe that we're in such a small minority and that we don't have any power at all. Just remember so many times what they say is actually the polar opposite of the reality. So just remember that at the start of 2020, we had our minds wide open to being totally manipulated by controllers with very nefarious purposes. And now that has dramatically changed. And that's what this great awakening is really all about. So the important thing to recognize is that every single time that we wake up to another one of their manipulations or their lies and we get crystal clear about what is really going on, that is a success for us. And we need to recognize that it's a success because otherwise, you know, we might think, oh, it's just so depressing. But that's not really true if you understand who you really are and what your position is in this entire weird drama. It's a success because now the lights are on and we can see where we're going and we can see what we're dealing with. And that is a very far cry from where we started off almost two years ago. So I really think we need to acknowledge that as a major success so that we empower ourselves with these revelations instead of um, seeing it as some kind of a negative that we're figuring these things out. So I think we wanna treat these realizations or waking up moments, if you will, as revelations. Because every single time we see something like this and we recognize it, we are cutting the cords of bondage to these controllers. Now I wanna point out one more way that they have been manipulating us that might seem kind of benign on the surface, but is actually very serious. And that has to do with their constant presenting us with their polling results. Have you ever noticed that we are constantly presented with polls on every one of the controller's issues and the results always seem to be split around 50-50? This is obviously completely fake. They do this to keep us feeling very uncertain about our position. Have you ever, have you noticed they never ever present us with polls about things that we care about? It's only ever about things that they care about. So they always have this approximate 50-50 split to keep us kind of you know, off balance, uncertain. And this is so we never get the feeling of having any momentum or any consensus among ourselves. There is no way that every poll on every single issue is always split within about five points of that 50-50 mark. See, overall, they use that 10-point spread to manipulate us psychologically in whatever direction they want to push us in. They want us constantly in a state of this push-pull battle, and they use these polls to keep us divided. They want us to think that we're battling each other, so we never Never look at the real evildoers, which is them. It is truly amazing how many ways they come up with to keep us all divided from each other. So as I said, here's the good news, and we really need to acknowledge this. We went from being naive, trusting lambs to the slaughter, to being warriors of truth. 
we went from getting on our knees every time they told us to, to saying, no way we see exactly what you're doing. Now this might sound simple, but it's extremely important. As long as we were believing the politicians and the media, we were putting ourselves in a totally subservient position. We had virtually no power at all to influence our destiny. We have repositioned ourselves in a place where we can access our strength. See, the controllers have completely exposed themselves. They can no longer hide like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Which is kind of funny because we were acting like sheep and thinking they were one of us, right? So we need to acknowledge the fact that we have shifted and we have moved. And now we have our eyes open and our feet on the ground. We are not sleepwalking anymore. Now, whoever you encounter who appears to be going along with the controller's agenda, realize that they are likely doing this out of fear. So instead of judging them, just recognize fear when you see it. Fear is completely debilitating. It is blinding and it is disempowering. So the truth is people in fear are actually suffering enough. And our judging them is probably not going to make things better for them anyway. And I'm saying this because I know that those of us who are not in fear, who are standing for who we really are, are judged often by those who are in fear. The reason I'm saying don't judge back because that just enhances the division. See, this is what the controllers want us to do. And we just have to say, nope, sorry, we're not buying it. We have a much more important use for our energy. We each need to find ways to navigate through these circumstances. And we don't want to judge ourselves or each other for how we choose to do that. So basically you want to have one singular aim. The aim is to protect and preserve your consciousness. So let's begin by considering it a win and a success that we understand the process of waking up more and more. That we realize that the more that we wake up and we can see all of the different ways that we are being manipulated, we are severing our bondage to these controllers more and more and more, which actually weakens them more and more. And here's why. Because if you remember, as I've said in previous videos, these controllers do not have power of their own. They use us to gain power for themselves. And they rely on their ability to lie and manipulate us successfully in order to be able to do that. So it might sound simple or maybe inconsequential to wake up to what they're doing, but every time that we wake up to another one of their tactics, we're cutting off their ability to use our energy. And this is how we can weaken them. And this is why you wanna be very careful not to put yourself in a state of feeling discouraged or depressed whenever you wake up to see more and more of what they're actually up to. Because when you understand the underlying dynamics of who they are compared to who we are as human beings, you will recognize that this is a very powerful and positive thing to be able to do, to be able to wake up and see more and more of what they're really up to. So this is a big, big part of our ascension journey and of what we need to be doing as lightworkers, starseeds, and awakening humans. So now let's talk a little bit about how we can preserve and protect our consciousness and how we can navigate um, more and more through these crazy circumstances that we find ourselves in. So the first thing you wanna do is just simply accept that we live on a very weird, messed up planet. Not that the natural earth is messed up. I'm not talking about the natural earth. I'm talking about the human conditions on this planet. That's what's very weird and messed up right now. And simply put, this planet has been taken over by nefarious entities who want to do us harm. Now, I know it's so easy to grieve the world that we left behind in 2019, and I think that's completely understandable. But also realize that that world was actually an illusion that was specifically designed to set us up for what we're experiencing now. 
It was designed to make us obedient and complacent so it would be easy to close the prison door starting in 2020. But the good news is that we can actually draw a lot of good from what we remember of ourselves in 2019 and prior to. We can still remember what happiness and some degree of freedom actually feels like. And we can use that as a gauge to protect our consciousness now. So let me explain how that can work. As you navigate through this bizarre land of the controllers, be the resourceful creator that you naturally are. Here's how you can discern what to do and what direction to take. The controller's agenda is to completely remove us from the natural world and from any connection to our natural selves. Therefore, our agenda needs to be to remain as natural as possible and to protect and defend our natural state of consciousness. So for example, if you are being locked down, ask yourself this question. What natural needs of mine are not being met in this situation? And then you wanna find some new creative ways to meet those needs. And since none of us know if they're actually gonna to try to lock us down again, I have a proactive suggestion for you. Brainstorm a written list of all the things you could do in that situation to meet the natural needs of your human consciousness. Keep that list in a safe place and bring it out if you feel discouraged or depressed. Remind yourself that your primary role is to maintain your consciousness in its highest, most natural state possible. Here are a few examples of things that you could do. And if any of you have any other suggestions, please put them in the comments below so that we can all have some new ideas. So here are a few suggestions. You could decide to read physical books. You could learn and do art. You could either garden or grow indoor houseplants. You could strengthen your connection to your guides and angels. You could go online and take some lessons and learn how to dance. You could write a blog. You could do things to raise the vibration of your home and your living space. You could write and send physical letters to people you love and care about, which would be so much more interesting than just using email or texting because physical letters would actually give people that you care about a more of a, a physical connection to you, which is what the controllers don't want us to have, right? So the possibilities are really endless. The controllers want you sitting home alone, being locked down and being totally depressed. They just want you sitting around saying, woe is me. But when you position yourself as the natural resourceful creator that you are, that's just not gonna work out for them. See, we wanna be so responsive to all of their nefarious acts that there is ultimately no way that they could ruin us as human beings, that they can ruin our consciousness, discourage us to the point where we no longer seek to evolve. All of these are just various ways to really outsmart them. See, these creatures, and I also include their human counterparts in that definition. These creatures are so clumsy and stupid. They have no idea how to actually integrate with living things like ourselves. Now, I'm not suggesting in any way that you just look at this as well. I just have to figure out how to put up with their lockdowns and put up with all the stuff they're putting us through. That's not what I'm suggesting at all. I'm suggesting that we preserve our strength and our consciousness because ultimately, we want to go to metaphysical levels, to much higher empowered metaphysical levels so that we can maintain our evolution and our ascension process. And in order to do that, we must begin by preserving our consciousness and our vibration. Because what they're trying to do is basically crush our vibration and push it down to the lowest possible level. So we wanna make sure we never allow them to do that. Now I wanna mention one more very important thing. We human beings have a massive asset in terms of our connection to the natural universe. So we have this ability for this natural connection as natural human beings to maintain a natural connection to the universe, but not just maintain it, we want to deepen it more and more. And that is a very, very powerful process. And what we need to realize, 
Guys, the controllers do not have access to the natural universe. They have completely cut themselves off. That's an, a huge asset that we have that they do not have. And this is one of the main reasons that I am suggesting that we need to protect and preserve our consciousness. So if they choose to lock us down or whatever other stuff they're trying to do, there's a reason we want to maintain our natural state of being. It's so that we can continue evolving by connecting with that natural universe. Because what they want to do is they want to shut us down energetically and make it impossible for us to do that. So this is the reason why I've made the suggestions that I've made. It's not, it's not in the spirit of, oh, we'll just find a way to put up with it and deal with it. That's not where I'm coming from at all. The purpose in preserving our consciousness is so that we can stay connected to the natural universe and deepen that relationship to levels that we never even before imagined. So we can learn to work together with that power and evolve beyond all of this nonsense. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it out with anyone else who you think would find this beneficial. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell because I am here every Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday with all new videos. And with that, I'm sending you so much love, light, and high vibrational energy. And I so look forward to seeing you in the next video. Namaste.